7,000 kilometers away in Asia, we find several other contenders for the world's worst venom. While most people try to avoid close contact with venomous snakes, here there are some who court danger on a daily basis. Sacred among Buddhists and Hindus, the Asiatic cobra is a confident species and will bite if alarmed. The Asiatic cobra is also a bit of a show-off and its threat posture has become an iconic symbol of Asia. Coming face to face with these snakes, Thai snake charmers uphold a tradition that goes back thousands of years. If any snake had an opportunity to bite handed to it on a plate, it would be this one. Two charmers in this village alone have been bitten recently. But the Asiatic cobra is dwarfed by a gigantic relative, the longest of all venomous snakes, the king cobra. At over five meters in length, the king cobra can raise enough of its body from the ground to stare a standing human in the face. Some have lived to tell the tale. I've been bitten 19 times by the king cobra, and I survived. Many people in our group have been bitten by snakes. It's not just me, it's more than 10 of us. I will keep performing until I die. Many of the charmers who work with king cobras believe they have a high level of intelligence and it's possible the reptilian performers only deliver dry warning bites, injecting minimal venom. In the wild, they mostly save their huge venom capacity for their favorite prey, other snakes. However, this part of Asia does have a problem with another more irritable snake, the Russell's viper. Russell's viper is especially nasty throughout its range. It not only causes um, kidney damage, nasty bleeding effects, and in some places, particularly for instance Sri Lanka, can cause degrees of paralysis and muscle damage as well. This snake is one of the most dangerous in all of Asia. Preferring the outskirts of cities, it kills thousands every year. Why are so many people bitten by this species? There are two times a year when Russell's viper bites reach a peak. They coincide with the planting and harvesting of the rice fields. Many of this snake's victims are farmers whose remote rural location prevents them from getting the immediate medical attention this bite requires. It can take days before a victim can reach hospital, long enough for the venom to do serious damage. The Russell's viper strikes at close range and a single bite can deliver over 100 milligrams of venom. As the venom diffuses into the bloodstream, it interrupts the blood clotting mechanism, leading to hemorrhaging and finally to devastating kidney damage. Let's consider the worst case scenario. What do you do if you're bitten by a venomous snake? Forget sucking out the venom. That's strictly for the movies. Wherever you are in the world, a serious venomous snake bite without proper medical attention can lead to permanent injury or even death. In most cases, you need an injection of antivenom. This is an antidote created by injecting small amounts of the true venom into a host animal such as a horse. The immune response which follows produces antibodies against the venom. These are harvested from the animal's blood to make antivenom. We use predominantly horses because one, they're big and you can get large volumes of blood from them without causing any problems to the horses. And the second thing is there isn't a great deal of, of diseases that can be passed on from horses to humans. What basically happens is you take the venom, you inject it into a large horse, you give it a small amount and over time you increase the amount of venom that you give to it. 
What the horse does is its immune system then starts to produce antibodies. And you think it's chewing gum as being this antibody that I'm producing, and I'm the horse. So we'll produce the chewing gum. You have this antibody now, and what happens is the venom is a particular shape because it's gonna act and lock in almost like a key into a door. Now, if I can take this antibody and wrap that up, that key will no longer work. So it'll float free in the body, but it won't be able to lock on to the bits and pieces in the cells and cause death and problems for humans. While antivenoms will neutralize the toxin, they cannot reverse the process of any damage that's already done. Being monitored in hospital is often essential. But there's one snake bite where even without antivenom, it is possible to survive. The Malayan crate is one of the few Asian snakes carrying a purely neurotoxic venom. As a nocturnal hunter, it stalks its prey in darkness by following scent trails, often entering through an open window or door. And the sleeping inhabitants may never even know they've been bitten especially since the fangs are very small. As the neurotoxin goes to work, it's only the unnerving paralysis on waking that points to a snake bite in the night. The toxin blocks nerve endings that control muscles, including the rib muscles vital for breathing. But unusually, this venom can work its course through the body and as long as the victim can be kept breathing through the paralyzing effects, they are likely to survive. While both Russell's viper and Malaysian crate present a serious threat to Southern Asia's human population, it's the cobra that is the greatest danger here. Not the mighty king cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world, but its smaller cousin, the common cobra. And again, we turn to Jamie Seymour's new classification system. The Asiatic cobra is most commonly found on the Indian subcontinent, but its habitat extends further into southern Asia, and it shares its living space with millions of people. Its confidence also contributes to it biting up to 15,000 people every year. While its fangs are not the biggest, the snake does produce a surprisingly large volume of venom. Thankfully, its venom only scores moderately on our potency scale. Nevertheless, it remains one of the biggest killers in the venomous world. <laughs>